In this example, I want to very quickly show you how we can go from Snowflake data within a database on Snowflake into a pandas data frame. We'll be doing this all inside of Wayscript so we can store our secrets safely and set up automated executions so we can do this on a time cadence. Getting started, what we'll do is create a Python file from within a brand new layer. We'll say something like snowflake pandas.py. And the goal of this will be to get data from a Snowflake database and finish with the end product of a pandas data frame that we can start interacting with and manipulating. So to begin, Snowflake already has a library that we'll be using and it is called Snowflake Connector. Anytime we use a library within our Python scripts, it is good practice to create a requirements.txt. In this requirements.txt, we will just need a few things and here are those dependencies. So we'll be using Snowflake Connector Python and a pandas addition to that. So to get those working in our environment here, we will use pip install read in those requirements.txt. And that will install all the libraries that we need. We'll give this just a few seconds to install and we'll get more dependencies, including NumPy and Pandas. That's set up and we're ready to go now. Since we're interacting with a third party service, we'll be using credential values and we'll likely want to store these as secrets or environment variables. So we'll import OS so we can call those later on in our script. Let's go ahead and take care of those credentials. I have a few values here of user and account. If you need any help on where to get these values from inside of Snowflake, I have a step by step guide down below that will talk you through how to get these values. Next, we have a password that will be our final step of authentication. We'll throw this into a .secrets file. That way we're not writing out passwords in plain text. So I'll go ahead and add this value and then click on add secret down here. And then we'll call this using os.environ.get. With that password stored now, we, like I said, we can use password equals os.environ.get and then the name of your secret, which I just named on the same password. Awesome. So we have all the credentials that we need to interact with the third party service of Snowflake. At this point, what we'll need to do is tell Snowflake where our data lives. We'll do that by setting a few more Python variables of warehouse, database, and schema. And this is just where our information is. This is the warehouse that I'm working in. The database lives here. And the schema where my actual data lives inside of a table is here. So with all of that, we're ready to get into how we can start pulling data from Snowflake. What we need now to use is a Snowflake connector object from Snowflake. And we can do that with a few lines that look like this. So what this connection object allows us to do is to create a cursor. We can name this whatever we would like. Dot connection method of cursor. So with this cursor object, what we're able to do is to do executions against our data using these values from here. All of our credentials is passed in this step and where our information lives is all in this connection. With our cursor, we can do these executions and it's as simple as saying whatever we named our cursor dot execute and then the SQL statement that we want to perform on our table. In my case, I already have one typed up. So let's use this one here where I'm selecting all information from a inventory table where a certain column fits a criteria. Our final step here, if we want to convert this to a pandas data frame, is there is one more method already built into this library that we can use. So with our cursor, we can say fetch pandas all as a method, and this will create a data frame for us. If we want to interact with this, what we might want to do is name it to a Python variable, and then we can start interacting with this DB. If you're familiar with interacting with pandas data frames, this is probably all you need. Your data frame already lives here. But just to show you a quick operation, we might want to print the length of our data frame index. So we can type all that out and we can print it using our terminal. Now to execute our Python script, we'll go ahead and refresh our page very fast because we added a secret. So we need to make sure that that secret is inside of our terminal session and We'll give this a second to load up. Now that we're loaded in, let's execute it. We'll say Python and then the name of the file. So snowflake pandas.py. I forgot to copy in the import part of the first dependency. So we'll execute this again with that corrected. And now we should be able to access our data and create that print statement. So we have all of this set up. If we just want to interact with this data frame a little bit more, 
we could say something like df and we'll print the first 20 lines of our information. I'll comment out this statement here and then we'll execute again. So we can look at the information of our database within a pandas data frame. So just in a few minutes, we've connected to our Snowflake warehouse and pulled information from a table. We've created a pandas data frame with it. One last thing I want to show you is let's say we want to automate this daily. It's as simple in our case as clicking on the trigger menu, which is, if it's not visible, will be this lightning bolt at the bottom. We'll click this plus and we'll click on cron. A cron job is just saying automated scheduling of a task and we can use any command that we want to run. In our case, it will be the same command that we've already ran, python snowflake pandas.py. And here we can use this cron tab selection to set this automation up to automate exactly when we want it. We could do things like automate every weekday at 8 a.m. or automate every Sunday at 12 p.m. And this cron tab, there is a handy tool to help develop cron tabs very easily. So don't worry if you don't understand this. There is a tool link below. It's a website, cron guru, that will help you build these cron tabs. With that cron trigger set up in our code in place, we need to be sure to deploy this application. So we'll click on deploy and confirm the deployment. What this does is sets up our cron triggers to be live and gives us an endpoint if we have endpoints to a production site. So with all of that said, I hope this was a quick example on how we can do this and how we can start interacting with our data. If you have any questions, of course, please let us know and we'll be happy to help. Until next time.